I presume you're here in order to learn of Magecraft. I'll have you know, there's no room for the weak-willed in this course. And despite your best efforts, the sorcery of our time is but a fraction of what it once was in the Age of Gods. Much of the craft is established through pedigree, and the culture of mages is riddled with deception and moral depravity. That said, if you insist, I shall do my best to educate you in this miserable, yet fascinating world. In our previous three lessons, we took a close look at the existence of true ancestors and the dead apostles created by them. While I wouldn't exactly recommend mages strive to become such beings, I find it important for us to know the truth of what exists in this world, no matter how grim or obscure. In that same vein, I intend to speak of other mysterious and often dangerous creatures that have roamed our Earth in the past. Thus, today's lesson will go over phantasmal species, covering them broadly while including specific examples where applicable. It might be hard to believe, given how generally peaceful the world is now, but years ago during the Age of Gods, Earth was home to all manner of fantastical and legendary creatures. Our typical understanding of biology and evolution took a backseat to the same forces that allowed gods to be born from human worship. In fact, the process of their creation is very much akin to the gods, whom we've discussed in relation to divine constructs. These different creatures can either exist through the legends and fantasies told by humans, or through the will of the planet itself. Their strength and influence are tied to the same factors as other mysteries, as legends gain notoriety with the passage of time. Mind you, while phantasmal species have arisen from the lore of man, they certainly aren't desired by humans, serving more of a threat in most cases. As such, any species existing in the modern era do so in hiding, while most have left this world for the reverse side. Often, phantasmal species are referred to as magical beasts, as they do not fit the planet's natural ecosystem. Mind you, this is something entirely separate from the beasts of humanity that counter guardians are summoned to defeat. They are ranked by the strength of their existences. At the lowest end are monstrous or demonic beasts. More rare and more powerful are the phantasmal beasts that tower over them, and the highest rank are divine beasts. Some of the species we'll cover fall into this category, beasts of the millennium rank, and are just as famous as the godly legends they're a part of. Not even standard magecraft can harm such creatures, as their strength is more on par with that of true magic. The most common type of phantasmal species existing today is the Chimera, mainly in part to how they can be created and manipulated through modern magecraft. Chimera is a blanket term that refers to composite creatures, beings formed by fusing parts of different beasts into a single functioning body. The most iconic variant is certainly a lion mixed with the tail of a snake. Chimera can be found in the wild, hidden within lands that mankind has yet to develop. In addition, these synthetic beasts play a role in the zoology department in the Mages Association. I dare say that such experimentation is unethical, but this is the association after all. Much less impressive are gremlins, sprites actually born in the modern era. Without the long-lasting legacy of other phantasmal species, gremlins are considered weak vermin that nest in electrical machines and appliances, often swarming around open ley lines. A species common in Celtic mythology is the demon boar. While there are a number of common variants of this species, the individual creature most associated with the name comes from the legend of Dirmud Adwibna, a knight of Fianna from the Fenian cycle. In this story, Dirmud's father Dun becomes jealous of and kills Dirmud's half-brother Congus. Upon discovering his dead body, Congus is reincarnated as a monstrous boar, destined to kill Dirmud. Perhaps just as famous is the Caledonian boar from Greek mythology. When the goddess Artemis became angry that the city of Caledon failed to prepare offerings for her in their harvest festival, she dispatched upon the city a gigantic boar that would ravage their crops. This boar was made the target of a famous hunt, in which various archers would compete to take it down. Ironically, the one to fatally wound the boar was Artemis' beloved foster child, Atalante. As a heroic spirit, Atalante is known to carry the boar's pelt, transforming her into a more aggressive and bestial form. Another demon boar can also be found in the legends of King Arthur. 
Torque Torith was a man who murdered and stole from the innocent, and as penance, was turned into a demonic boar with a razor, scissors, and comb strewn about within his hair. Rather than pacifying the killer, this transformation only heightened his rage, spurring him and his piglets to attack Britain. King Artoria set out on a swine hunt, and with the help of her canine companion Caval, she chased the demon boar from her land. In addition to demon boars, there also exist divine bulls, also referred to as god bulls or air-walking thunder bulls. They earn this title by being manifestations of the god Zeus after he transformed into a bull in an attempt to seduce Europa. Two bulls, thought of as children of Zeus, are tasked with pulling the Gordius Wheel, a heavenly chariot made to honor Zeus. Iskandar, King of Conquerors, claimed both the bulls and chariot when he, dare I say, solved the puzzle of the Gordian Knot by slicing through it. As a rider servant, Iskandar mounts the chariot, using the bull's thunderous footsteps to trample his foes, as well as soar through the skies. Other divine bulls exist, such as those tied to the legend of Asterios. When King Minos broke a promise with Poseidon to sacrifice a divine bull, his wife was cursed to lust after bulls, and from her womb came Asterios, a hybrid between man and bull, who was feared as the horrific Minotauros of the Labyrinth. The Minotaur, as he is famously known, is a phantasmal beast despite being one of a kind. The Greek demigod Heracles did battle against some of the most intimidating phantasmal species. First was the Nemean Lion, a divine beast whose deep-seated rejection for humanity could conjure its own singularity. Heracles, with his own bare hands, fought this lion to its death, claiming its fur, the pelt of the divine beast, to use as a veil to cover his face from the works of mankind. Then there is the Hydra, a monstrous beast with regenerating heads and deadly poisonous venom that instantly kills its victims. Even its breath is poisonous, rotting the lungs of nearby humans. Even immortal beings, such as Chiron, have suffered so horribly from a Hydra's poison that they cast aside their divinity so they can escape through death. Most iconic is the Lernian Hydra, fought by Heracles as part of the Twelve Labors. Each time Heracles would sever one of its heads, it would grow back, forcing him to finally slay the beast with his bow and the technique Nine Lives, through which he shot 100 heads simultaneously. Hydra, in their infancy, are referred to as Juvenile Hydra, and surprisingly, the Mages Association was able to preserve one such Hydra at the Clock Tower. It has since been given to the necromancer Kairi Shishigo in exchange for participating in the Great Holy Grail War of Trephus. Amazingly, this allowed Kairi to construct a powerful antidote. While still on the topic of Chiron, his race of centaur fall under the classification of phantasmal species as demi-humans. As you can see, centaurs are beings with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a horse. Chiron, being a sage and teacher, is actually an outlier to the typical centaurs, which are thought to be savage and ignorant of knowledge. Heracles' sixth labor involves the Stymphalian birds, giant man-eating birds who swarmed Arcadia's countryside, destroying land, crops, and innocent people. Despite being pets of Artemis, cherished by Ares, Heracles chased them from the peninsula to stop their carnage. From the same mythology is the Pegasus, a type of winged horse that was normally quite peaceful. The most iconic Pegasus is one given to Medusa by the sea god Poseidon. In order to bring this creature into battle, she must use the special bridle known as Bellerophon, forcing her Pegasus to use its wings to generate shockwaves that tear apart their surroundings. When Medusa was decapitated by the hero Perseus, legends state that her Pegasus was reborn anew from the blood pouring from her headless corpse. The form of Medusa killed by Perseus, the Gorgon, also counts as a phantasmal species, despite being the only one of her kind. It is the bestial shape Athena cursed Medusa to mutate into throughout her life. At its final stages, Medusa could not contain her destructive nature, causing her to kill even her two beloved sisters. Then we have the griffin, a monstrous beast akin to a chimera in that it consists of the body, tail, and back legs of a lion alongside the head and wings of an eagle. On occasion, a griffin will mate with a mare, ignoring all known biological processes to create a hippogriff, a lesser creature with the upper body of an eagle and the lower body of a horse. 
This otherwise hypothetical animal exists through mystery as a phantasmal species, one of which is known most for being a mount used by Astolfo, one of the twelve paladins of Charlemagne, going so far as to fly him to the moon. While the hippogriff is physically inferior to its griffin parent, their true strength comes from simply existing. By denying such an impossible combination, hippogriffs gain reality-bending abilities, such as dimensional shifting, phasing through attacks at the cost of mana. Perhaps more intimidating is the Kelpie, which in Gaelic means water horse. As the name implies, it is a water demon that existed in Britain's northern islands and is known for devouring the flesh of young women. It can change from its four-legged form into a winged water bird. Such monsters can be found in the seventh labyrinth of Kaobak Alcatraz. Born from the planet are fairies, a blanket term to refer to all manner of nature spirits, some being sprites with wings, and others being goblins and spriggans. Just like the planet, they are known to have a strained relationship with humans. Some, such as Vivian, the Lady of the Lake, grant magical items forged by the planet, while others are ferocious creatures that would sooner feast on human flesh. Similarly, there are giants that exist across various mythologies. There are the Jotnar from Scandinavian legends, including Surtur, the fiery king of giants, as well as the Titans from Greek myth. Then there's the white Titan Sephar, or Velber 2 sent from an alien source passing through the cosmos. If not for the light of Excalibur to slay Sephar, human history as we know it may not have survived to see a modern era. Other noteworthy giants include the Protean monster Grendel, slain by Beowulf, and Caligorante, the giant that Astolfo captured and paraded around town as a part of his adventures. Similar to centaurs, there are Lamia, humans with the lower body of a snake. They are known for drinking blood, inspiring the name Lemuros, a class of vampire altogether different from a dead apostle. The only known Lemuros outside of legends is Volfang Faustus. By the authority of Babylonia's primordial goddess Tiamat, there exist a variety of demonic beasts born to serve her. When Chaldea's master Ritsuka Fujimaru went back in time to a singularity of this era, Tiamat's stand-in, the Gorgon, dispatched these beasts to attack the city of Uruk. One of the highest ranking of Tiamat's beast is the Bashmu, a massive poisonous snake with front claws. The Bashmu, being a divine species, is so strong that when Semirami summons one in battle, she can only conjure its top half. From North and Central America, the goddess Quetzalcoatl commanded a phantasmal species called the Quetzalcoatlus. They take the form of Cretaceous-era pterosaurs, but are more powerful than those existing naturally. They are the largest flying animals in history, and when serving Quetzalcoatl, they command rain, wind, and lightning. Egyptian mythology brings us the Sphinx, as well as other guardian beasts which serve King Ozymandias. Sphinx are lion-bodied beasts with the faces of humans. Their glorious wings are the incarnation of the sky god Horus, able to manifest winds and fire. The king of these sphinxes is known as Wehem Mesut, the Cosmos Sphinx, and can be seen through Ozymandias' noble phantasm, Abu el Hol Sphinx, the lion-bodied beast of the hot sands. A species that still exists, but is in rapid decline, is the werewolf, a race of magical beasts that descended long ago from a single golden werewolf. As one might expect, golden werewolves are considered the strongest, with silver wolves coming in second. They've spent their time through the modern era, living in the mountains of northern Europe, struggling to survive as their females fail to conceive children. There are plenty of Asian phantasmal spirits as well, including Shen, a giant clam from Chinese folklore whose breath rising from the seafloor creates mirages. In a fossilized state, it was eaten by Kiara Seshoin, fusing with her body in the Mariana Trench, granting her the power of illusions. Japanese mythology introduces us to demonic yokai, including terrifying spider demons known as Tsuchigumo. The strongest of these demons, Kugamimi no Mikasa, once presided over Mount Oe before being struck down by Minamoto no Raiko. Another kind of demon, the Oni, was extremely common during Japanese history, but is now entirely extinct. Symbolized by raging fire, Oni exist either as non-human beings born as Oni, or humans who became Oni throughout their life, including many who are mixed blood, such as those in the Tono family. 
Oftentimes, these families try to suppress their own tendencies in order to live in human society. That said, there are dozens of pure-blood Oni who have gone down in history, such as the seductive Shuten Doji and hot-headed Ibaraki Doji. Not all phantasmals are quite so violent, however. Succubi and Incubi, for instance, manipulate and feed upon dreams. The female variant, or succubus, can maintain eternal youth by draining a man's bodily fluids. These creatures are often thought of as promiscuous, but this is not always the case. For instance, Merlin, the mage from Arthurian legend, is a half-incubus who can subsist simply from dreams, using what he learns through them to maintain a human composure. By far the most fantastical phantasmal species are dragons. Legends about dragons pervade almost every mythology known to man, taking on a variety of forms across cultures, and different kinds of dragons are ranked between all three classes of phantasmal species. There are dragons of tremendous renown, such as Fafnir, a monster chronicled in both the legends of Sigurd and Siegfried, establishing the iconic archetype of a fire-breathing beast that guards its treasure. In many cases, there are humans who possess the blood of dragons, using this power and passing it down between generations. Such is the case with Artoria Pendragon, who embodies the Red Dragon. In addition, there are many subspecies of dragons, such as the much smaller wyverns that happen to be weak to a particular samurai. Beyond all we've discussed so far, there are some phantasmal species that have no classification. Among them is Kurid, the beast of billows from the sea, whose roar can conjure tornadoes. It is most famous for its skull, which was used to create the demonic spear Gay Bolg, as well as a suit of armor named Kurid Koenhen. Then there's Leviathan, a mythological figure from the Old Testament. While there have been no direct sightings of such a creature, Leviathan is described as a giant demonic beast that lives within the sea as a serpent, capable of stirring massive waves just by swimming. Leviathan can be found as one of the components making up the alter ego servant Meltralis. Legends also detail that Leviathan was the mother of Tarask, a dragon pacified by Saint Martha. Bicorns and unicorns are phantasmal species known to purify human souls. Of course, it is no surprise that mages would find a way to weaponize this power. The Seventh Holy Scripture, a purifying weapon of the Holy Church, was created by slaying a unicorn and using its horn as a key to purge cursed beings. Lastly, the crest worms created by the Mato family count as phantasmal species. These worms actually come in various shapes in order to complete different tasks. The more sickening lust or blood worms feed on humans and their magical energy. They can merge together to imitate a human shape, providing Zokin Mato a series of disposable bodies he can use to prolong his life. In summation, phantasmal species are creatures that exist in spite of natural laws. Like gods, most of them are born from legends, growing stronger as those legends pervade. Even so, with the decline of the Age of Gods, the majority of these creatures have either gone extinct or have fled to the reverse side of the world. The few that can still be found in the modern era are either hidden away or survive through mage experimentation. I implore you to treat this lesson as one would learning of the dinosaurs, acknowledging that the lives of the past shape the world today. As we have just spent this lesson looking back into the past, for our next lesson, I wish to speak of what is perhaps the future of all modern magecraft, Spiritrons. Whether it pertains to the exploits of Caldea or the mysteries of the Moon Cell, Spiritrons may in fact prove more useful as mana in the natural world continues to decline. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my anime discussion, lore, or Let's Play content. If you want to support me directly, there are now three ways that all provide the same benefits. You can click join here on YouTube, or join Patreon or Subscribestar for access to exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate your fandom!